Welcome to a Fallout 76 episode. I'm here to answer a few questions today. One is in regards to when you can start to PvP. Can you start PvP as soon as you exit the vault? Yes, you can. I don't know when it was changed. It, you usually will get that little notice on your screen at level 5 saying you can engage in PvP. But I just made a brand new character, fresh out of the vault. I'm going to go to my menu, down to settings. And I'm go, it's by default, pacifist mode is on. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And see if I can engage on my main character, who is right in front of me. There we go. We'll find out in a second. And the answer is yes. I can engage in PvP fresh out of the vault. My character is like level 2. You get to be level 2 as soon as you exit the vault. So that person has to return fire or a melee hit. Now you're both aggroed to each other and you can both engage in PvP. So you have choices. You can respawn. You can seek revenge or ignore. When you hit ignore, it removes that person from your map. They can't see you and you can't see them on the map and you're safe to go about your day. Um, let's go back in and what I'm going to do is turn pacifist mode on again and I'll show you what you see. Now, most people, it's a personal choice whether you leave it on or off. I do like PvPing with friends. It's a great way to test your weapons, armors, power armors, things like that. And also, I'll be showing you all about workshops in a minute. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put pacifist mode on. And this is, like I said, what you see, it will be on by default when you leave the vault. So if I go and try to engage this individual in PvP, you get pacifist mode is enabled and you're not doing any damage to the player at all. So there you go. Let's see if she can... Now, you won't get the this person is attacking you because you're in pacifist mode. If your pacifist mode is off, um, you will see the so-and-so is attacking you. So let's get on to workshops. So this is the workshop we're going to take. I've already cleared out all the enemies. And I'm going to go check and make sure that I still have pacifist mode on. I'm going to run you through a couple of different scenarios. So you're a little more comfortable taking a workshop. My character is level 2. I'm just going to check and make sure that I still have pacifist mode on. And go down. And pacifist is on. So the really great thing about workshops is they are loaded with resources. You can put down resource collectors and harvest everything and just run around to each of the uh, areas. Here we have a crystal mine. Over here we have a couple of acid pits. And down here. And there's still more at this location. There we go. You can go on your map. And when you see that particular symbol of the hammer and wrench, you can see crystal, acid, gold. You can kind of ignore the food and water. You know, it means you have to set up, you know, say a water uh, purifier or something. But the main resources you're after here are crystal, acid, and gold. And there are two ways to actually take the workshop. You can physically go up to the workbench and claim it this way. You're spending 25 caps. Now, it can be higher if there are a lot of resources already built there. And the second way you can do it, at least on Xbox, is you push the little uh, start button, menu button, and you can also claim the workshop that way. I'll show you how that will work in a bit. But as soon as you initiate that you want to claim this workshop, this little device of a bunch of little satellites will rise on this post. When it reaches the top, you own the workshop. So in the back, you can see my main character. I'm using two Xboxes again. She's going to come in just inside the boundary of the workshop. And the first thing that happens is the claiming of the workshop has stopped because an enemy player has entered the area. Now, she tried shooting at you. Because you didn't shoot back, there's nothing that can happen. As soon as that player leaves, you continue to claim the workshop. I'll just show you there one more time. As she comes in and out of what we call the zone of contention, 
you can't claim it. And as long as you're in pacifist mode and it hasn't been claimed, so you have a choice. You can walk away and there we go. Now what you're seeing on the center of the screen is the unowned workshop. You're losing your claim to that workshop because you're now outside the zone. Same thing, whether it's yours or the enemy players, you're trying to decide who's going to take it over. Now here, I'm in pacifist mode and I'm hitting the other player. We have not engaged in PVP yet because nobody owns the workshop yet. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off pacifist mode. And there. Now that enemy is now hostile because I fought back. As long as you don't fight back, you will not die. Now, as I'm responding, I'm also losing the claim to the workshop because I'm not physically there to claim it. So it's losing its claim. Let me respawn. Now you have a choice. You can just respawn, run over. You can seek revenge. That's definitely engaging in PvP. Or you can choose to ignore the other player. When you click on ignore, that player is removed from your ability to see them on the map and they can't see you on the map. And they're essentially blocked for the session. So you can get on with your day. The choice is yours. I've chosen to respawn and head back. Let's just run back down the road again. Now you can't, because you don't own it, you can't travel back to the workshop. Like I said, I had to travel to Hemlock Holes and run over. Let's go ahead and pick up my little bits of junk. So the enemy chose to leave and not take the workshop for themselves. So now I have to spend another 25 caps and try to take it again. So again, we wait for the entire process. I'm going to wait till I absolutely can claim this workshop. I'll leave the enemy player, me, outside of the zone. So again, when the little satellites reach the top of the post, we will own the workshop. The good thing about taking your first workshop is you get an, a really nice exclusive set of plans um, that are auto-learned. And there we go. We now own Hemlock Holes Maintenance. Now, the reward was delayed. At some point in the video in the upper left corner, you'll see that you will learn the ability to craft all your defensive walls. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, some of them popped up as soon as I hit the build menu um, and everything. So they will come up shortly. Okay, so here's my enemy player. I'm just trying to show you guys a bunch of different scenarios here at workshops. There we go. It unlocks barricades and the, yeah, as soon as I opened up the build menu, I can actually show you right in the build menu. And let's just go over to defenses. Let's see. Not that one, that one's atomic shop. Here's one. You've got guard posts. Now this was all auto unlocked when I took over the workshop for the very first time. Fences, it also includes some other, a gate that matches. Down here you have another guard post, different cement guard posts. All of these are auto unlocked the first time you take a workshop. I did not know these plans, I am fresh out of the vault. And also, these are really cool. You can't really put a lot on these. They're meant to stay by themselves, but you can attach them. You can put walls along the bottom. I think you can put walls at the top. And these are these great, small, short, defensive walls. I like to use those on balconies. And here we go. We have a help defend. We are going to be under attack in a moment. Let me see how many quick things I can show you before I have to defend the workshop. Now, the one really nice thing about workshops is you're not really using your own resources. The workshop has its own little pool of resources. And here are those um, resource collectors I was about to show you. Let's see if we can set these up real quick. 
Now, it'll go green when you find the correct one that matches the mine that you're on. There we go. We have our gold extractor. And they'll only show you the ones that are applicable to the correct workshop you are at. So we know that there was a crystal one and there should be two more acid pits over here. And we can drop this last one right there. That one. It's nice too because now the area glows. It never did that at the beginning of the game. And leave your... I usually don't put things down. Usually with this workshop, you get attacked within the first minute of owning it. So I really don't put anything down until that's over because then the enemies don't have anything they need to destroy. I always put my little generators, in fact I need larger ones, up here out of the way so that they cannot come in and hit them. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end. The help defend is almost over. There's the last rad scorpion. And the help defend is over. My little enemy came in to help out. Now she can leave. Go, go, go. Yes, you helped. And off she goes. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier... As you can see, being fresh out of the vault, look at all the resources that I have. I can actually build a few things. Not a monstrous camp here or blueprint anything, but you are allotted a certain amount of resources to build things in the workshop. Enough to get you down your resource collectors and maybe a couple of uh, uh, generators. And like I said, that's the allotment at each workshop. So if you don't, like level two, she doesn't have anything, you're assigned a certain amount. So you can still build a few things at your workshop. Okay, now back to PvP at workshops. I currently have Pacifist off. I know I'm under attack by the enemy player. I am not returning fire. If I had a gun, I could, but I'm choosing not to engage. Now, notice that they're outside the zone of the workshop. And so far, no matter how much they're hitting me, I am not dying or being murdered at all. Okay, now let's bring her down here and come into the zone. Just want to double check here real quick. Pacifist mode is off. That works. Okay, let's bring her down into the actual workshop zone and have her try to take the workshop. Okay, so she's now in the zone. Like I said, she can either click on the workshop bench or click inside the build menu and wait for her to do that. And as soon as she tries to take the workshop, you're instantly hostile to each other. You saw that her char the character is now red. She can kill you. So this is what happens. As long as they're outside the zone, they cannot kill you. As soon as they're contesting the zone then they can kill you. Whether you're in pacifist mode or not, you can be killed as soon as an enemy comes into the workshop and contests it. Now, they don't even have to be visible to you. I'll show you a little trick. So we're coming back in. Now, because you're coming back in, you're contesting your own workshop. You're coming to defend it. You are still hostile. So they can kill you again. Because she's still red. Even though you've died. And respawned. So you can choose to leave. But you're still hostile. They can still turn and shoot and kill me. But as you can see. My ownership. Is going down. And yes. I can be killed. Being outside the zone, not contesting because I re-entered the zone. So we're still hostile to each other. Now it's time to respawn and walk over. I know this is confusing. I swear, there used to be a time where, you know, if you were contesting a workshop, you could actually travel to the, uh, the owner of the workshop's actual camp and destroy it. Because you were hostile to each other here they could destroy your camp and your teammates would travel to another camp and destroy the camp. You cannot do that anymore. 
Okay, so still hostile. Okay, so she's going to back out. And I'm still losing the workshop. Because it's still being contested. I think there's just a little bit of lag there. Even though she's outside the zone. Okay, so now it's starting back to me claiming the workshop. Still hostile. Let's see if that goes away. Like I said, this stuff can be pretty confusing. Let's see what happens when it gets to the top. Aha! It has stopped. And I'll show you how this is where people can be sneaky coming in. They can just crouch, go invisible, especially if they're wearing chameleon armor, which I have. And you may not even see them on the map. You may spend time hunting all over the zone to try to find them to kill them. Meanwhile, you're already dead. So they can do this. They do not need to come up to the workshop bench. They can contest anywhere. They don't even have to shoot you. They don't have to do anything. They just have to enter that zone. And that is it. You can go ahead and kill them. They can go ahead and kill you. And because they're crouched, they don't show on the map at all. So there's many variables with workshops. And you have to get pretty close to find somebody like that. Okay, let's speed it up. I own the workshop. There we go. There's our reward coming up. It's usually something small like a toilet or a daisy rug. <laughs> it's never anything good. Okay, so now I officially own the workshop. We're still hostile to each other. Because it's left over. So they can go ahead and kill me once again. Let's go ahead and do that. And as soon as she respawns, this should be gone. So, of course, you lose a little bit of caps when you're a small character out of the vault or something. I lost two caps. Big deal. No problem. Since we own it, I can travel directly back to the workshop. And then we will run on down the hill. And all should be back to normal. That the enemy and I should not be hostile anymore. So I know this probably has been a little bit confusing. Sometimes recording this stuff. It's, it's difficult to explain sometimes. And like I said, there are quite a few different variables. Uh, basically, um, if you do not want to engage in PvP in a workshop, just leave. If you feel like fighting a couple of times, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you'll get a little bit of experience and things. So right now, we're not hostile to each other. Um, and that's it, really. Uh, I went over, yes, you can PvP straight out of the vault. A little bit of an overview of what can and cannot happen in or out of pacifist mode at workshops. One of the best things you can build first off is a stash box. Go around to your resource collectors, collect all your junk, and build a stash box and put everything in there. This way, if the workshop is attacked, there we go, that you have everything stored and it, you know, you, you will have all of your resources there. So hopefully you found the video helpful. Thanks so very much for watching. And I'll see you out in the wasteland taking workshops.